This is 102 Mega FM feature story that comes every Sunday at 8 p.m. Uganda's forest cover across the country tremendously declined from 24%, about 4.9 million hectares of land area in the 1990, to less than the current 9%, about 1.956 million hectares in 2018, according to National Forest Authority. That means Uganda has lost about 3 million hectares of forest cover in 25 years. The major threats to Uganda's forest cover are illegal logging, massive tree cutting for charcoal production in order to meet the growing demand for charcoal, especially especially in urban areas across the country. I am James Onono Ojo. In this radio feature, I will be looking at bamboo as an alternative fuel for cooking and other uses. There have been plans to identify tree species that can be used as alternatives to endangered trees such as Avrizella Africana, Bayo, and Shea trees, among others. Top of the list of these tree species are teak trees as grown in Kenya and bamboo which has been successfully tested in Asian countries such as India and China for making charcoal, furniture, firewood and poles among others. There are mountainous bamboo tree species that only grow in mountainous areas and lowland bamboo tree species that grow in the lowland like northern Uganda. For example, Oxytenan which has been growing wildly. There is another species called Bambusa vulgaris from China and India takes four to five years and can perform well in northern Uganda without any challenge. Already, it has been tested successfully in Moyo District by International Bamboo and Rattan Organization with support from United Nations. The major objective here is to conserve indigenous tree species from extinction. Moses Ogalo Piu is the managing director of Ecoways Uganda, a local investment which has taken keen interest in growing bamboo in a Choli sub-region. Currently, Ecoways Uganda is multiplying bamboo seedlings at its nursery beds at Koro in Omoro District and Kalon in Agago District. Ogal told me that the lowland bamboo is the one that can perform very well in northern Uganda with a tested case in Moyo. They have built charcoal, charcoal dome, they have charcoal briquettes, so it is possible. And bamboo is the best alternative because it is sustainable. Charcoal trade in Uganda is currently estimated that 30 to 40 percent of charcoal being used in Uganda is coming from Achille land. And bamboo being sustainable in the sense that if you cut wood mass of bamboo from one, one, one acre in three years and you pile them, it will take you between 40 to 45 years to cut the same wood mass from the same acre from any other tree species because bamboo keeps on sending new ones every year. No other tree would do that. As a private investor, I asked Sogal if he's not afraid of the business risk in trying to pilot multiplying bamboo seedlings. There is a market study for bamboos in Uganda already done with the support of SNV and I know within the next five to ten years and going at the current rate where the official figure of natural forest cover in Uganda has been depleted to about 15 percent and going at a rate of about depletion of about two percent per year it means in the next five to ten years if this rate continues we will have no natural growing trees but only planted trees around if that happens what will our mothers and fathers use for cooking and even building bamboo is the only alternative because with bamboo you can have charcoal charcoal pellet charcoal briquettes and even and biomass which you can convert into electricity and supply to the national grid. Recently, a report by environmental activists in Acholi sub-region under their umbrella, Our Trees We Need Answers, indicated that almost two-thirds of the forest cover in the region is already lost in the commercial logging and charcoal business. Arthur Wu is the director for African Center for Research, a think tank that coordinates the activities of the environmental activists. I ask Wu if he thinks bamboo can be an alternative to the endangered species they are fighting to protect. There are other initiatives that have come in place. There are groups like-minded people. I can quote an example of Kijani Forestry who are based here along Jomo Kenyatta Road who actually are now not looking at bamboo. But for them, they think they can use species like Acacia nilotica. They are very thorny. They take about three to four years for them to mature and can be used also to produce charcoal. We must open up as many avenues as possible to ensure that we do regulate production of charcoal. We think as we do charcoal production using bamboo, we should also emphasize protection of indigenous species that are at a fast rate of being wiped away from the sub-region. 
Meanwhile, on May 24, 2019, the New Vision reported that government is planning to plant 375,000 hectares of bamboo having been tested in India and China to reclaim forest cover and promote it as alternative for firewood and charcoal, among others. In an interview with the New Vision, Tomo Bonokelo, the executive director of National Forest Authority, said bamboo have about over 1,000 products, among others according to Bong A, furniture and charcoal briquettes and raw materials for making peppers. He also revealed that government is breeding bamboo to restore forest cover, adding that bamboo has fibrous roots that can prevent soil erosion. As we talk already, a few commercial farmers in Acholi sub-region have embarked on commercial bamboo production. Lieutenant General Charles Otema Wine, the Uganda People's Defense Force Reserve Commander, is one of them. General Otema is growing bamboo on over 1,000 acre piece of land at this farm at Tangi Village in Poron sub-county, Nwaya district. He explained to me why he has embarked on growing bamboo on a large scale. Very good for environment, for rain catchment and the like. Secondly, this bottle you see here plastic the caps we use plastic which is very very bad for the environment you can uh, mold bamboo which you can use in form of pulp now the pulse of bamboo you can use in the cup replace the bottles like in US that's what, what that's what is being done if you if you really care for for the environment the government has to invest which is almost a, is about a hundred million dollars and which I think the government can afford that uh, Ethiopia they have, they, have, they have now embarked on it Kenya they have already embarked back on it in USA they are doing it so really our future now lies with bamboo the senior UPDF officer also appealed to me that he's currently setting up a bamboo charcoal production warehouse worth market value of a twenty thousand US dollars approximately 73.2 million Uganda shillings. We are going to get power very soon in Uluyo. I've already put the, the warehouse. In three years, you'll come and see I'll be busy selling the selling the briquettes. And the UN uh, fraternity, like the refugee comes, because the refugees are really finishing the, the trees around. So I've, I've, I'm working out also to supply them with, with, the, with, with, the, with the briquettes. 4% of the 2.9 million hectares of Uganda's forested area is found in Acholi, according to the Food and Agricultural Organization 2005 report. In a bid to halt the current high rate of forest destruction in the area, in July 2018, local councillor 5 chairperson in Acholi sub-region signed a draft charcoal bill. The Acholi Sustainable Charcoal Production Bill is intended to promote sustainable use of forest in the sub-region. The bill also intends to promote growing of specific tree species and streamlining the exploitation of forests. Currently, National Forest Authority has also embarked on raising bamboo seedlings at their nursery beds in Gulu Town. A bamboo seedling goes for between 4,000 to 5,000 shillings. But will growing bamboo as an alternative cooking fuel is the pressure on our forest cover? A question I put to Florence Ajok, the forest supervisor in charge of nursery at the National Forest Authority, Gulu offices. Growing bamboo, like for our case in Uganda here, I feel it will protect our species which are getting lost. Because bamboo is going to do some other works, which is driving people towards other spaces, like building poles, then making sheds for restaurants, making tables, chairs, baskets, whereby people go and cut some other spaces when they are still young and they begin making with. So I feel communities should begin learning about the importance of bamboo I task her to explain what NFA is doing about promoting bamboo growing in the community. We are trying our best now to make people know about bamboo because NFA itself has already put the bamboo sample at our headquarters and also they are multiplying to branches like the regional offices like in Nigulu. We have some few bamboo which was produced from the seeds of bamboo. Those are the training which we need people to pick. That bamboo seeds can also grow into the real bamboo which you know. As we conclude this subject, the high rate of deforestation has led to habitat loss and species extinction and soil degradation resulting in poor crop yield. Deforestation is also contributing to climate change effects and destabilizing water cycle leading to disappearing of local stream. Frequent weather and climate variability including droughts, interruption of frequency and intensity of rains resulting into floods and landslides in the highland areas. This has affected crop and livestock yields, hence livelihood. Reporting for Mega FM, I am James Onono Ojok. Have a good evening. 
Thank you for listening to 102 Mega FM Feature Story. Catch us again next week at the same time and same station. For comments and views on this feature, send us an email to megafmnewsroom at yahoo.com or send us a letter addressed to Mega FM Feature Desk and drop it at the station or call 0780 193 555.